Do we live inside of a black hole? Observations using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope have just found something very peculiar in our universe. All the galaxies seem to be spinning in the same direction. Strange, right? Could this mean that the Big Bang Theory is all wrong and instead we live in a black hole? Well, some astrophysicists seem to think so. But how could these two things even be linked? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, let's talk about the black hole universe theory. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is NASA's eyes on the early universe. The first stars and galaxies formed when the universe was just a few hundred million years old. So as the light from these ancient objects traveled towards us, that light is stretched by the expansion of the universe into the infrared part of the spectrum. JWST is specially designed to see this infrared light. And the JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES, is a program specifically to look at that, the highest redshift, so furthest and oldest galaxies, clockwise or anticlockwise from their clockwise or anticlockwise from our vantage point. They made a surprising discovery. Early galaxies are not spinning randomly in all directions, as you might think. The Big Bang Theory and inflation says that the universe should obey the cosmological principle, that the universe is homogeneous, it's the same everywhere with no center or edge, and it's isotropic, so it looks the same in all directions, there's no preferred direction. But the JWST observations challenge this. About two thirds of the galaxies were found to rotate clockwise, while only a third of the galaxies were rotating anti-clockwise. This anisotropy shouldn't exist. So one explanation of this is the black hole universe model, which says that instead of the Big Bang initial singularity, where the universe began as this infinitely dense point in space, the black hole universe model proposes that the universe exists within an extremely massive black hole. But while from the outside it appears that matter is collapsing into the black hole, this matter never actually hits the singularity point, that point of infinite density where all physics breaks down. Instead, quantum gravity causes a bounce. On the other side of the bounce, a new universe expands out. From our perspective, from the inside, this expansion can look like a white hole, the complete opposite of a black hole, a region where matter seems to erupt from a singularity. But in the black hole universe model, this white hole is not your classical white hole because it isn't just sitting somewhere in space. It is the beginning of an entire space time, the birth of a new universe. There could be many of these, these would be multiverses. Now, this theory is actually quite elegant because it gets rid of the need of a singularity at the start of our universe. Instead of starting from nothing, the idea is that our universe emerged from a bounce, the rebound of a collapsing universe in a higher dimensional or parent cosmos. So what we think of as a Big Bang wasn't the beginning of everything, but rather a transition from an earlier phase of extreme gravitational collapse. The universe didn't pop into existence out of a void it came from an incredibly dense but finite state inside of a black hole-like region of a larger universe. And if that parent black hole was spinning, which it is likely to do so since most black holes we've observed do rotate, then our universe would naturally inherit that angular momentum. This built-in spin could leave an imprint, a kind of preferred direction in the large-scale structure of our universe. And that might explain why some observations suggest that early galaxies exhibit a slight bias in their rotational alignment, something that's hard to account for in our standard cosmology. But that's just the beginning. The black hole universe idea also offers possible answers to some of the biggest puzzles in modern cosmology. Take, for example, the supermassive black holes we've seen with the James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers have found supermassive black holes that existed less than a billion years after the Big Bang. That's far too early for them to have formed through the slow process of accretion, like accreting material or mergers of smaller black holes, according to current models. It's a genuine mystery. However, 
If our universe formed inside of a black hole from a previous universe, those initial conditions might have included extremely dense regions perfect for the direct formation of massive black holes. These wouldn't be the regular black holes that we know of that formed from collapsed stars. They'd be primordial black holes, born massive right from the very start. That could explain why supermassive black holes appeared so quickly. They didn't need to grow because they were already huge at birth. And there's more. This idea might also help with another major problem, dark matter. We know dark matter exists because it's gravitational effects like the way galaxies rotate and how light bends around invisible mass known as gravitational lensing. But we've never seen it directly. We've never seen dark matter. The leading candidates are exotic particles like WIMPs or axions, but despite decades of searching for them, despite all the labs that we've built, we've found nothing. What if dark matter isn't made of exotic particles at all? Now, one compelling idea is that it's actually made up of these primordial black holes, those black holes from the early universe. If our universe was born inside a black hole, the intense chaos and density of its formation could have naturally created a humongous number of these black holes very early on. They'd be very hard to detect since black holes don't emit any light, but they'd have the right gravitational properties to behave exactly like dark matter does. In other words, dark matter might not be mysterious particles at all. It could be the very same black holes left over from the birth of our universe. Now don't get too excited just yet. These JWST observations are based on a relatively small sample of just 263 galaxies. That's not nothing in cosmology, but it's still very early days. There are an estimated 100 billion galaxies in our observable universe alone. With such a tiny sample, it's hard to say for sure, but we do need more data. And one of the biggest concerns is observational bias. This is a really important point. Some scientists are investigating whether the apparent rotational alignment of galaxies could be, at least in part, a kind of illusion shaped by our own motion in our universe from our vantage point within the Milky Way. So because our galaxy is rotating and we're observing the universe from inside of it, that motion can introduce subtle biases like the Doppler effect, which might make galaxies rotating in a certain directions appear slightly brighter or more detectable than others. So if we're more likely to spot galaxies spinning in a certain way, it could skew our data, even if if the universe itself has no preferred direction. And what's especially interesting is that the asymmetry appears to be more pronounced near the galactic poles, so regions in our sky that are less obstructed by our own galaxy. This of course raises some questions. Is this a real signal or is it just easier to detect patterns where there's less dust and fewer stars in the way? Either way, this discovery, if confirmed as an intrinsic property of the universe, could fundamentally change our understanding of the cosmic origins and evolution. We might need to go back to the drawing board with our current cosmological models like the Big Bang. Now, there are many ways to test the black hole universe model too. For example, if we were to observe a large number of primordial black holes, which we can do with microlensing surveys looking for primordial black holes that pass in front of stars, or through gravitational wave detectors detecting black hole mergers with unusual masses or frequency distributions consistent with primordial black holes. And with current and next generation gravitational wave detectors like LIGO and Space Space Lisa in 2030s, it won't be long before we find out. So what do you think about this theory? Are you convinced? Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey, space.